Russ, did you see Stonecutter Cam, his Turok coaster that he did? Oh, that is very cool. <laughs> he watched the truth first, learned about the Turok, this whole meme that we've created. Because we've yeah. officially made Turok popular again. It's good. It's, it's me- awesome. It's meme status. Once we get the cover artist on the show, that is my oh, pinnacle. Full circle mm-hmm. right there. Absolutely. But um, shout out to Stonecutter. You've been a homie for a long time. We appreciate your support. And we appreciate that you're using your Turok as a coaster. Whenever you're in <laughs> Seattle, we're going to a Mariners A's game. There you go. There you go. All right. So this is True First. Mm-hmm. What is True First, Russ? Sure, Tom. True Firsts is actually where we have our friends over at CBSI, comicbookinvest.com, and one of their fantastic authors, Topher, they have a great article. And the whole idea behind it is that you may have seen the first appearance in a comic book, but did you know did that person actually showed up in an ad somewhere before, or a Marvel preview somewhere before, or on a billboard someplace else? And or in a Blu-ray DVD combo pack? It honestly could what? be. And, and quite honestly, we do have the opportunity to find where the actual true first of some of these are that's right don't forget to hit that like that subscribe button because we've been doing this video this series every week for the last couple of weeks now and we're going to keep it going so the first comic book that we have on this list today is the sculptor by scott mcleod this is a hardcover book a graphic novel and apparently this is optioned for some type of movie production there's a script being made Okay, well, and and we know that the difference between optioned and greenlit and in production, there are many, many different phases of this, but being a hardcover book and having high praise on the cover, Neil Gaiman even said, one of the best books I've read in a long time. And he doesn't I know, just say that for everything, right? No, he doesn't say that for everything, but he reads a lot. And I know that there are a lot of people who send things to him to get the seal of approval, and he does give pretty good recommendations most of the time so we'll see what happens with this one this is very very interesting but true first of the sculptor that's right and it's a graphic novel this isn't something that you're going to see on the hot 10 list this isn't going to be a huge spec book but if it's going to hit theaters and it appeared in a graphic novel comic book of some kind we want to report on it and shout out to Topher for doing it yeah it's good All right, this next book on the list is super exciting because we're talking Sly Cooper again. If you remember, I think it was last week, our Hot 10 Comics List video, we have a Sly Cooper number two making the list because Mm -hmm. it sold for over 100 bucks. So because it made the list, we have Topher who included some more info on Sly Cooper. Turns out the first appearance of Sly Cooper in a published work appeared in GamePro, that magazine number 194 in an ad. So first appearance of Sly Cooper is actually in a magazine, issue number 194, but he goes a little deeper because we found out that Sly Cooper, issue number one, that was actually released at a convention. It was a convention exclusive. Sly Cooper, issue number two, however, this was a comic book that was included in GamePro issue number 205 in the sealed pack. So this book that's selling for over a hundred bucks, we know its origin. It came from a magazine sold at like a GameStop. That is really, really interesting. And you know what? We actually had someone comment on the Hot 10 list about how they were working at GameStop at that point in time. No one wanted the comic book, so he probably had 10 or 15 copies of it in his back issue bin. And I told him not to flood the market because that's the way you ruin the market by releasing 10 copies immediately. Just trickle them out slowly. There you go. There you go. Some good, good advice from the comic book sensei over here. (laughs) All right. This next one on the list I am stoked about because I'm a Conan fan. I'm a Red Sonja fan. Mm -hmm. And we have a Conan the Barbarian coming on the list. Joe Rogan would be proud. Heck yeah. Shout out Joe Rogan. Let's make that happen. (laughs) You know he's a fan of Frazetta. I know. It's great. He's got to send him some Who's Frazetta. Who's not a fan of Frazetta? I know, I know but Joe Rogan is. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I know. Joe... All right. But issue number 14. Hit, explain what's going on here, Ralph. Okay. So issue number 14 of Conan the Barbarian, and this is the original Conan the Barbarian run that started in the early 1970s and ran until the mid-90s when they killed it. Um Issue number 14 is the first appearance of Elric of Melniborn. And this is a character that Michael Moorcock has been having for years. And there was a bunch of stories. There's a fantastic short series that Mike Mignola does the art for. There is a role-playing book of Elric of Melniborn. There is a bunch of stuff going on in this character. And recently, we had a new re-envisioning of Elric 
which is just a bringing back to the same character. But the first time this character has ever showed up in a comic book is Conan the Barbarian number 14. And it is very, very much you know, because on the cover it oh, says yeah. there. Elric. And it's got his name painted in blood on the side of a cliff. You can't mistake it for any other appearance because he wrote his name on the side of a stone wall. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Conan. And this is something that I'm sure is out and about. Like, there's not a whole lot of people looking for this book, but it's an up and coming character again. Like, it's been around forever, but people are finally giving it some love. And I'm excited to see some Conan on this list. And just to finally read the note that you gave me, it says, pronounce Melna Bonet, and I have never heard it pronounced that way ever by anyone. And I apologize to Mr. Moorcock for mispronouncing Melna Bonet for goddamn 30 years. <laughs> so I apologize. That's my fault, as well as everyone else oh. I've ever talked to about this character. Okay, so you know what? You're saying that you have to apologize for something because you're worried about pissing some people off. This is, this is probably a good time than never so oh is it i have okay. a couple things to talk about here because uh -oh. all right so first off we have a couple <laughs> books we're talking comic books and then we're gonna we're gonna touch on something else here. sure okay so we have spider-man into the spider-verse coming out soon the movie yeah all right there is rumors that this spider-man is actually spider-man from e96283 all right a different earth and this spider-man is the peter parker from the original Spider-Man movie. Like, we're talking Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. All right, this is rumors. We don't know yet. But if this is to be the case, what is the first appearance in published work of that particular Spider-Man? Because it's not the movie. And the first appearance of that Spider-Man actually happened to be in two exclusive comics that Walmart released. Okay. So the first thing I want to, like, hit you with is what are your thoughts on this being a key that Walmart produced. First off, this makes sense. This makes sense because we know that in the Ultimate Spider, Ultimate Spider-Man with Miles Morales, Peter Parker is dead. We even see a little bit of a snippet of the movie where Miles Morales is at the gravesite with, like, you know, mourning when Peter shows up. So we hope that this will have a little bit more explanation as to how he's showing up in Edge of Spider Verse and how it's Peter Parker from a different universe. That being said, if it's a Walmart exclusive that comes with a DVD or a Blu ray, okay, that's a tie in, but. I am not a huge fan of these Walmart-only books because these Walmart-only books are not being given to every single Walmart. There's a lot of Walmarts around town, a lot of Walmarts in all these different states, and if you can go from Walmart to Walmart to Walmart and less than 50% of them have comics, I mean, I've been to six Walmarts and none of them carry the comics that Walmart is releasing right now. Well, they're creating artificial scarcity for these books, and I think it's very, very difficult. If every Walmart across the country, thousands of Walmarts, all had the comic books, they'd be worth cover price. The only reason that a lot of these Walmart-exclusive comics are worth money now is that the artificial market is being created by them not being at every single Walmart. Interesting. Yeah. And this particular book, I mean, this came out a long time ago. I mean, we're talking the official movie adaptation for the first Spider-Man movie. Oh, well over a decade ago. Yeah, crazy stuff. Yeah. But it's interesting that just, you know, a decade later, we now have Walmart putting out Walmart exclusive, like full compilation of stories, like oh, not yeah. just a little teaser for They're a movie. working hand in hand with DC to be able to release Walmart exclusives. All right. So what were you talking about, Tom? All right, it's, I'm coming to it. I'm coming to it because I'm tying this together because we have Spider-Man. What? From the first movie. This is like, what are we talking about? We're talking about speculation, guys. That's what we're talking about. But here we go. Here's another one to just kind of throw out there into the ether because there's more speculation happening about this new Joker movie. What's the speculation? That this new Joker, Joaquin Phoenix, is possibly an origin story for the Joker from the Nolan films. They may be the same Joker. Now, that got to that got Topher thinking, all right? And what he says here is that I know, see, now you're gonna you know where I'm going with this now, right? I'm already all right. In pain. All right. So Topher wanted to know what is the first appearance of the Joker from the Nolan series. And you know who that is. Your favorite. Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger. And you know what? The first appearance of the Nolan versus Joker actually premiered in a mini comic that was included in the blu-ray copy of batman begins okay it was actually inside of there and it, it was only included in the blu-ray the dvd had a usb type of thing going yeah, on flash drive type thing yeah 
All right. So interesting that like this, these are out there. People may have them in their living room on their shelf and may not even know it. Sure. But that could be the first appearance of the Heath Ledger Joker, tied it all back to what could be speculation for the movie. But, Russ, you caused a ruckus. Okay. All right. I, I pushed some buttons, and, and I did. Um, I made an offhanded comment during the last True First video, and we were doing it with Ryan, and I made an offhanded comment like that I don't like Heath Ledger's Joker. And apparently this is a blasphemous statement. And I wanted to be able to do a little bit of clarification here because if Joaquin Phoenix's does in fact do the origin story for the Nolan versus Joker, there's a little bit of separation there, but I do want to be very, very clear that um, I don't hate Heath Ledger. I don't hate him as an actor. That was not what I was saying. You know, I, I liked the Knight's tale. I thought Brokeback mountain was a good movie. Um, 10 things I hate about you was actually shot at the high school that my girlfriend used to go to back. in. so, I mean, I, I've been a fan and I've been following him for many, many years. I believe that his depiction of the Joker wasn't my depiction of the Joker. Now I understand that for a whole generation of people out there, this is the Joker that they know and love. This is the Joker that they grew up with. Um, my main reason for not liking Heath Ledger's Joker, and this is from the very beginning of when I watched it. It all harkens back to uh, the Neil Gaiman two-part miniseries, Whatever Happened to the Cape Crusader. Mm. And this is a two-part series, and it's one issue in Batman and one issue in Detective Comics. And Batman is dead. And basically this whole comic is showing what these villains are saying at his wake. And there is this scene where the Joker pulls up and he gets out of his car, and there's this little shoeshine boy there who, like, you know, Joker flips him a coin to park his car. And the guy says, D -d -d don't kill me, Mr. Joker. And the Joker says, why would I kill you? There's nothing funny about that. And in that perfect moment, you realize that the impetus for everything behind the Joker, everything that he does, is that it's humorous. And I think Heath Ledger missed that. I think that for all of his faults and everything that everyone complains about Jared Leto's Joker, he got the it has to be funny part. I think Jack Nicholson got the do it with a smile, got that part. Heath Ledger's Joker felt very malevolent for the sake of being malevolent. It felt like Heath Ledger's Joker was trying to break stuff and blow things up with no real purpose. And I've made the point that if you stripped away the makeup and the clothing, he would just be someone breaking things. And you could have called him anything. Now, if you want to go even farther with that, as much as I did like some parts of the Nolanverse movies, most of the villains were very vanilla. If you take away Bane's costume, if you take away Scarecrow's costume, you take away a lot of these things, it's just a bad guy. But it's not like the Joker. The Joker is the force that drives Batman. It is very yin and yang. Without one, the other one doesn't exist. And you need the two of them to be a check and balance system. And it didn't feel like any of those villains were really doing that in Christopher Nolan's Batman movie. You know? Definitely. So. No, I, I hear what you're saying. I'm interested to hear what the comic fam has to think about that. I personally uh, tend to agree with you. He's not my favorite Joker. Right. I really enjoy those movies. I watch those movies every year. Mm -hmm. But definitely not my favorite Joker. And I really like Jared Leto Joker. So I, I know that that's a blasphemous statement, too. Right. But you know what? We're all entitled to our opinion. And I want to hear from the comic book fam. Don't forget to hit that like button, that subscribe button. And... We're not going to finish without giving some shout outs because we had some people. We typically do shout outs on our top 10 list. Oh, yeah. But we're doing it for our true first now because we have people hunting. And you know what? It makes me excited to do this video because that means that there are collectors who are valuing this coverage. It's such a great thing. And, and truthfully, when you've been a collector for as many years as you and I have, you get to the point where you get a little bit jaded. They're just like, oh, I've seen so many of that book. Oh, I've seen this thing. And it might be someone else's grail, but I might have owned 40 copies of that book, and it's not as much of a grail. So when you have something that renews your hunt, something that gives you the opportunity to go out and go, ooh, I need to find that, it's a great thing. And thank you, everyone, for watching these True First videos. Thank you, everyone, for watching the Hot List. Thank you for watching the rest of this stuff, because really... I'm just glad that we have so many people that are commenting that thank you for re-sparking my interest in comic books. It's a great thing. We don't ever want that love to die, and this is definitely a good thing right now because it gives you more of a chance to look for something else you like. We had a bunch of people pick up the X-Men number one Jim Lee, the Cyclops cover, looking for that Omega Red pinup. Oh, that's awesome. We have I Like Comics, 
Anthony Ann Comics, as well as Cobra Kai Comics, all picking it up for that centerfold. Well done. Glad that you, you found something that you enjoyed and something that you never know that may turn up to be a, a key, more key book than the actual first appearance. Oh, totally. I mean, it, it's six bucks near Mint in Overstreet, but when you have the variant cover that actually has the first appearance of Omega Red, you may actually see that moving. It's the same type of thing that when you have that X-Force number one with the Deadpool card, that's Deadpool's rookie card, that's actually worth a little bit more Ooh. than the Shatterstar card. Oh, see, you're you're already jumping into another controversy over right? here. I was like, I gotta oh, pull I, you back, man. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Shout out to Teve over at Lords of the Long Box. He shared his Marvel Premiere 28 First Legion of Monsters. He must be a Morbius fan. Absolutely, and we want to give a big thank you to Topher for making this list, and thank you again to CBSIComicBookInvest.com for being such great people and working with us. Thank you so much for watching this video. We do appreciate your time, and as always, geek responsibly. Nuff said. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you shop on eBay, which you should prioritize your LCS first, but if you shop on eBay, you can click the link below and any purchase you make within the next hour, we don't get any of your information. Instead of eBay getting the full fee, we get half and you can help support the podcast. That's pretty cool. LCS first. Link below for eBay. <laughs>